Hello everybody, it's Nancy Amato, the Be More Stamper. Welcome, welcome. Today is Saturday, the 20th of January already. And I have to say, we are having a very big football game here in Baltimore. So, I have to start off by saying, go Ravens, have my Ravens uh, sweatshirt on. So, that starts at 4.30, so I can guarantee you, I will definitely be finished today by 4.29. <laughs> so, today we're going to make this fun fold card using the Be My Valentine bundle that is in the January through April mini catalog. It is one of my favorites ever because, you know, I love bees. So let me just open the catalog real quickly, double check what page number this is on. There it is. Here is the whole suite of products. So it's on page nine. So it starts on page eight there with some examples and page nine right here. Today we are going to use the designer series paper the embellishments and the bundle. We're not going to use the ribbon today, but we are of course going to have the stamp set and the punch to make our little cute little bees. So let me show you the card we are going to make today. So here it is. I gave you guys like a little bit of a sneak peek, I think another time. So it is a fun fold that has this cute little fold right here in the middle with the designer series paper. And this makes a really cute little Valentine card. And, um, or just really any kind of, you know, I love you kind of card. So let's get started. Let me show you what we are going to need. Oh yes, we are going to wobble our bees, okay? So we are definitely going to use the wobbles <laughs> that I found on Amazon for this fun little card. Alrighty, so here is our bundle right here. I'm going to just slide this over right here. I'm going to put the stamp right here because we're going to our stamp and the punch. Um, I have the stamps already mounted on to the blocks. And let me show you what we're going to need to make this card. Okay, so we need a piece of sweet sorbet cardstock. And this is going to be four and a quarter by 11. And you're going to score it in the middle right at five and a half. Okay, so that is our card base. And then for the front of our card, we're going to need a piece of this designer series paper. This is the Be Mine designer series paper. And this is four by five and a quarter. So I chose the stripe pattern for the front of the card. Then the next piece on the front that we're going to stamp on is a piece of basic white, and that is four by two and three quarters. Okay, so that's the front of the card. We'll get to the bees in just a quick second. Let's open it inside. And then our piece for the inside, this is the designer series paper again, it is four and one quarter by six, okay? It is going to go all the way to the edge here. So four and one quarter by six. And then we have these two pieces of basic white. So we have two pieces here and they are each two and one quarter by four and one quarter, okay? Have a little sticky something on there, all right. So let's do our stamping first, and then we are going to do um, the assembly of the card. So when I stamp my bees to get ready to punch them out, I have found that it is easiest for me to use a strip of basic white that is like one and a half inches wide. And I just keep it the 11 inches, <laughs> the length of the paper. And then here's an example right here. You can see I have a little lineup of bees, my little bee factory. And then for the antennas, I just use a half inch strip 
as well. And if you are cutting layers to go onto the inside of cards, so if you're cutting paper down to four by five and a quarter, you are going to end up with this little strip left over anyway. So it's a good use of this paper. So you can do the antennas there. All right, so the colors we're using today are Daffodil Delight, Sweet Sorbet, and Memento Tuxedo Black. These colors coordinate with the colors in the designer series paper. Okay, so I really didn't have to think hard about this. I just flipped over the paper to see what colors are being used and that helped me make my decision what colors I needed to pull today. These are photopolymer stamps. So that means we can see right through them, which works out really well for lining up the bee, okay, the bee's body and then his stripes. But what that does mean is we don't really have a cushion between the stamp and the block. So I suggest using one of our piercing mats as a cushion on your work table. All right, so let's do a couple of bees first here. Now I have played around with it both ways, whether I've been stamping the body first and then adding the stripes or stamping the stripes first and then adding the body. For me, it is easiest for me to just do the body first and then try to line up the stripes around it. But everybody might have a different method and whatever works for you is fine. So when we have a punch bundle, we wanna look at the back of the punch because this is what we're actually going to be looking at as we feed our paper in to be punched, okay? So I am gonna start with, um, I need to make two Bs, okay? And I need to make sure you can see the point of that bee for the little bee stinger thing is to the right hand side. All right, so I am going to make sure when I stamp this that I'm going to line that up pointing to the right hand side. All righty, so let's get started here. Let's just do two bee bodies. Okay, so I'm just inking this up with Daffodil Delight ink, pressing it down and give it a second because this is a solid image. Give it a second for the ink to absorb into the cardstock. Okay, we have that there. We need another one just like it. So just like an assembly line, we are going to go down the line here and make our second B right there. Okay, all right, so those are the bodies. Let's open up the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I gotta slide some of these over, okay? Now we're going to ink up the stripes and the surface of the Memento pad is felt, so it's a little bit harder. It's not like our firm foam. This is a felt ink pad sort of like the old fashioned ones that we used to have. So you do need to really make sure you are getting that ink onto the, the stamping surface of the stamp there. Okay, so I do need to push a little bit harder and hopefully my head won't be coming in here or my head won't be hitting it. But then you just look through and you just kind of line it up as best you can, press it down and then you have your bee. Oh my gosh, isn't that so, so cute? All right, so we need to do that for the second one as well. So let's get this bee stamped. All right, and I know my hair is probably sneaking in there and I am just gonna say it's ponytail kind of day. <laughs> so there we go. All right, so we have our two bees done. Now let's put their little smiley faces on there. There are several different little faces here that you can add to your bees. You can kind of have a regular smiley face, a winky smiley face. This is kind of my smiley face because my eyes always close when I smile. Or you can have one that looks, he's looking a little perturbed right there, isn't he? He's, he's looking like he has a problem. But we're gonna use our regular smiley face 
And again, we're going to just ink that up with our um, Tuxedo Black ink from Memento. And we're just going to stamp down that face. Now he's flying this way, but the other bee is going to be flying this way. So we need to just flip him over so we have his face going in the right direction. Okay. All right. I'm going to close up this ink pad and this ink pad so that I don't put my fingers all in them. And let's bring in our punch. Okay. I'm going to move these over here because they are dirty and I need to clean them. All right. So for this bee, we are going to feed him into the punch from the right hand side. Okay. And then you can start to press the punch closed to just hold your paper in place. And you're just trying to eyeball it. I have to flip it up this way a little bit so I can see it. There we go. I think that looks pretty good once you like it firmly punch it and he's going to fly right on out of there. Okay. All right. So now we're just going to slide this on down and we're just going to line him up. There we go. And now punch him out. Okay. So we have our bees already done here. Now, what I like to do now is just take my paper snips, get rid of that, okay? We can put that in my, my recycling. Now, on my sample, I made these wings with our vellum cardstock, and I do like that look, but it does take a long time for that, that ink to dry on the vellum before you try to feed it through the punch. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use our basic white cardstock for our wings so that we don't have to sit here and wait. Now I even tried drying it with um, my heat tool on low and that did help, but it did not get the wings all the way dry. All right, so the wings are gonna be punched out with this heart portion of the punch. So we know we want to have this angled to like the upper right and lower left. So we're gonna just use that same piece of paper, okay? So we have one wing and two wings. So now we can feed this in. And like I said, wiggle this around until you like the position of it, okay? And then punch it out. There we go. So there's one. And then here is the second one. Okay, so now we have two bees and two sets of wings. Now let's look on the inside of the card again. We have this little heart that we are popping out from the center of this fun fold. Okay, so this heart is also in this stamp set, but we are going to stamp it with the um, Sweet Sorbet ink. Now, Sweet Sorbet is one of the in colors that will be leaving us after the annual catalog retires. So be sure to get whatever you need, whether it's a reinker or more cardstock, or even just um, Stampin' Blends, or the ink pad itself. Be sure to stock up on those long before the catalog retiring list comes out, because we know what happens. Once they're gone, they're gone. <laughs> so I always suggest my friends stock up on their in-color products during celebration, because not only do you have a great chance of getting it in stock, but you will also get a freebie when you order $50 or more. Okay, all right, so we have all of our bees created here. Now let's bring in our little panels for the insides. Let's stamp these greetings. So we are now going to need the Sweet Sorbet and the Daffodil Delight once again. 
we're all finished with the tuxedo black so I'm gonna just put all of our little pieces right there oops we forgot to do the antennas didn't we let's do the antennas first let's bring this back in so this is just a half inch strip of paper and you can see how this heart we're gonna feed this in from the left and this one has the heart being from like the upper left to the lower right so let's pull in this cute little antenna stamp and we need to do two of those for our bees so we are going to position this just like that okay because that's going to line up with that portion of the punch there we go now we have all the parts of our bees So let's feed this in and punch this. These little guys really go flying sometimes. So <laughs> there's one. I have been finding them everywhere because I've just been mass producing bees. And uh, sometimes I find them on the floor, on my sweatshirt, whatever. Okay, so now we have all of the parts of our bees. Now we can bring in the pieces that we're going to need to stamp. So let's do the inside pieces first. So we need the Happy Valentine's Day. Okay, that is right here. Let me mount this on the block straight. That would be helpful. All right, there we go. And then over here we need the You'll Always Be the One for Me. Okay, so on the right hand side, our greeting is going to be on the upper part of that paper. And then on the left hand side, it's going to be on the lower part. So let's just open up our sweet sorbet. And let me move the post-it note off of there. Okay, this is going to be the happy Valentine's Day. And that is going to go up right there. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have an avalanche of stamps here that I need to clean. <laughs> Hopefully they won't all fall on the floor during this video, but you know, if they do, that is real life crafting. All right, so now you'll always be the one for me is going to go right down there. Okay, while we have the sweet sorbet ink open. Let's do these two stamps for our front panel. Okay, this is our four by two and three quarters inch panel. Put my sticky note over there. Okay, so we are gonna put this greeting right down the bottom. Let me flip it the right side up here. So you're as sweet as honey. It's going to go along the bottom there. I have it about a quarter inch up from the bottom. Okay. And I love that they're photopolymer, so my chances of stamping it straight are greatly improved. I'm not going to say perfect, but greatly improved. <laughs> and then we need this little heart to be right in the center at the top. So there we go. That is going to be right in between our little bees. Okay, I do need to clean off this stamp because we're going to now stamp some Daffodil Delight hearts in the middle. So I'm just going to open up my little case here to where I keep my chamois. You can tell this chamois is well loved. It has tons of ink on it, but I just rinse it off and it is good to go. Alrighty. So let's bring these back in again. Slide that on over. Okay, so this is our right side right here. And then this is our left side. So I am just going to ink up these little hearts, this little heart again with Daffodil Delight and put one up there and one down here, okay? And then for the left-hand side of the card here, I'm gonna put one down here at the bottom. And then one right up there. 
Alrighty. So we have all of our stamping done. I am just going to take a quick second and run these on top of my chamois just so I can kind of stack them up out of my way so that I do not knock them all onto the floor because we know that happens quite often. I call it a craft a <laughs> So there's a little face and the stripes and the wings and then our greeting. Okay, so they are all clean just in case I need to restamp something. Okay, let's bring in our paper trimmer because we're going to need to do some scoring, alrighty, on this piece right here. So I can move my foam mat out of the way. And we have our paper trimmer right here. And the dark blade here is a cutting blade. The lighter blade, this lighter gray blade, is the scoring blade. So that is what we're going to want to do with this piece of paper. Again, the measurement here is four and one quarter by six inches, okay? We are gonna score it at three inches right in the middle first, okay? So three inches, and you don't wanna to press too hard because designer series paper is thinner than cardstock. Okay, so we did it at three, so we have a score fold there at three. Now we're gonna just flip it over and we're gonna do one and one half. Okay. And then I like to just flip it again and do another one and one half. So we still have the five and a quarter, the long side up at the top. And let's go over this again. First thing we're gonna do is have it right side up and we're going to just score it at three inches, okay? Then I like to flip it over to the back side. We still have that five and a quarter inch piece slide up at the top of our trimmer. We are just gonna now score this into this half into half, okay? So three inches, so one and a half. Close it and score there. And then I just turn it 180 and do the same thing, okay? If you want it to slide it along, you could do that and it would be four and a half, all right? I just like to flip it because then I only have to remember two measurements. All right, so we are gonna gently bend back that center score line and then burnish it with our bone folder, okay? So that is going to be our mountain fold. I had to double check and make sure I did that right. And now with these other score lines, we're just gonna fold those up and burnish those. These are both going to be valley folds. And I'm gonna show you what I mean in just a quick second here. So when I said mountain fold, when you put the paper on its side, you can see that this is a peak, like a mountain. Okay, so our center score line, the three inch score line is a mountain fold. But then our other two score lines you can see are valley folds. Okay, so that's what I mean by that. All right, we are ready to put this bad boy together. Okay, so let's get out. Let's do the inside first. Again, this piece is four and one quarter by 11 and scored in the middle at five and a half. All right, let me put my post-it note over there. All right, so we are going to open this to the inside. I'm gonna slide all these little pieces over here real quickly, okay? There we go. So we are going to put this on the inside of the card, but we are only gonna put adhesive on these outer flaps here, okay? This is what's gonna hold it onto the card, 
but we don't want any adhesive on these parts right here because we can see this has to come up from the card base, right? Okay, so here's how you do this. I like to use the multi-purpose liquid glue because it gives me some time to wiggle it into position, plus it's a very strong bond, okay? So there we are. So I'm gonna look for this center score line right here, this three inch score line. And I am also going to look for this score line in the middle of the card base. All right, and I am just lining that up and I just wanna make sure I am there by just gently coaxing it closed, yep. So I am right in the right position there and I'm gonna double check that my, the top is lined up with the top of the card and the bottom is lined up, so those two are flush. So now I'm just gonna close this over, put some of my multi-purpose liquid glue right on this panel, okay? And I can just lay that down, just like that. All right, give that a second to just grab. Then we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. So we're just gonna close that flap over. Add some glue. You don't wanna put glue too close to the edge because you don't want it to squish out onto your um, cardstock. Okay. And now we have glue behind these two panels and there is no glue behind these two panels. So now what we have is the same thing that we have with our sample. Now what you can do is just close this up and give it a good press. Okay, there you go. So that is just how easy it is to do that fun fold. Isn't that just so cute? Alrighty, so let's bring in our stamped panels here. We have this one for Happy Valentine's Day on the right-hand side, and then this one on the left-hand side. And I basically just centered these panels on the remaining cardstock. So you just try to eyeball and have an even border to the right and the left of each of these panels, okay? I'm gonna use my liquid glue again because I like it, because it gives me a little time to move this around, a little wiggle room time. So I'm gonna make sure that that bottom is lined up and the top. Okay, that is looking pretty good to me. And now I'm just going to push that down I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. And you don't need a lot of glue, you just need a thin little line, okay? I'm hoping you can see, oh, I don't know with the lights, if you can see how thin that line is. You don't need a lot because then that is going to show through your cardstock. So less is more. There we go. Okay, that is looking pretty good to me. Now I can press that down. And pressing it down just smishes out the glue a little bit more. All right, so we need to get grab our little heart here that we punched out already. And put that on this center score line here. But we can see that we don't want to have any adhesive on this back portion of the heart. So we just need to have a little bit of glue on the back of the left side of the heart. And then what I did was I just centered this center three inch score line right in the middle of that heart. So I am just gonna flip this over, put a little bit of glue here, just a couple little dots, that's all you need. And then bring my card back in and place that right in the middle. And I'm just eyeballing it. It is handmade. <laughs> there we go. We're just gonna press that down and give that a second. 
and you can see how that heart just stands out there. Alrighty, let's let this dry while we build our bees, okay? So I'm going to use the same um, Tombow Multipurpose Liquid Glue. We have our left hand side bee and our right hand side bee. And then their little wings and their antennas, okay. So let's just line up all these pieces. All right, so I am just gonna put a little dot of glue right here at the base of this little heart punch that has the antennas stamped onto it. And now I'm just gonna lay the bee right into where I want those antennas to be. There we go. Okay, so there's one. Now I'm gonna just pick up the bee once again and put him right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna move the wings down, do the same exact thing. Just put some glue at the pointy part of this heart. And then just pick up the whole bee and lay it down on the wings. Okay, let that grab for a second. So we can let those dry for a hot minute while we assemble the rest of the front of the card. Oops, I just had a pop-up ad come in, hopefully. Hey, Heather, how are you? I was hoping that that did not disrupt my, <laughs> my live at all. Alrighty. So let's take our piece of designer series paper. Again, this is four by five and one quarter. Okay, we are going to, let's look at this. This is all gonna be flat onto the front of the card because these bees are already going to be um, away from the surface of the card because they're gonna be on wobbles, okay? <laughs> so we are gonna just put this right on here, this layer. And we're just gonna center this in the middle here of the card of this layer and then we're going to put this whole thing onto the front of the card okay i just love this paper it is just the cutest all right let's bring in our card again okay so we have our inside done we just want to make sure we're on the right outside panel there yep <laughs> I have done that before. All right, we're gonna layer that right on top of there. Okay. So there we go. All right. Let me see if these guys are dry enough. Yep, seems like they grabbed pretty quickly. Now, we are gonna use wobbles to assemble them, put them onto the front of the card. And I purchased my wobbles on Amazon. I will have to put the link in the comments below. I'm not an affiliate, so I'm not gonna get anything from it, but I'm just gonna show you where I get them from. So the wobbles have basically two sides. It's a, it's a plastic spring. Okay, here, let me try to hold these up. It's a plastic spring. There is an opened side here that has a circle and wax paper covers the adhesive. And then on the bottom, there is a solid side that is also covered like with a wax paper. This is like a clear, um, what am I thinking of? It's just like a clear, oh my gosh, like a piece of acetate. That's what I'm thinking of. So you're not going to see, when you look at the front of the card, you will see the springs a little bit if you tilt it this way, but you're not gonna see really how they are attached to the front of the card, okay? So that's how you know which side is which. So here is what you do. You take the top ring. Oh my goodness, I have no nails, okay. 
I'm going to need my take your pick tool real quickly here. Okay. You peel off that wax paper ring. Okay. And now you are going to stick your B right to this ring. So what I like to do is flip it over and then I'm going to make sure I get this right on the B. I do like to take my bone folder or something like that and really push that down. So that is going to be stuck onto that B. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the second B. Let's remove this wax paper ring here. And sit this down right on the B. And I'm gonna press it again. Now, depending on where you live in the country, what your humidity is like and all that jazz, you may be able to just get away with just using the adhesive on the back of these wobbles. I usually like to give it a little, extra little hit of just two little dots of our multi-purpose liquid glue because sometimes I find when it's really humid that this might not stick as well as I want it to, okay? So you're gonna flip your bee over. First, you're gonna make sure you have your bees going the right direction. You don't want them going like this because it looks like they had an argument. So you wanna have them going like this. And then peel off this little wax paper again. There we go, there's half of it. And then the other half. There we go, okay. And then I just like to hit it with two little dots of glue. So I'm gonna put a little one there and a little one here. And then I know when I put that down, it is not going to go anywhere. So I do want to line up my other B so I know where I wanna put this one. Okay, he's gonna go right there. And again, I'm gonna use my bone folder to reach it under there and really push that acetate down so that it sticks to the front of the card. Okay, same thing again with this B. I can actually peel that back a little bit, bend it. It's a lot easier. Okay, oops, and let me hold this one up. Let me see where I am in the camera and show you kind of how to put, I just put like a little dot of glue there and a dot of glue there. I am not sure if that is going to show up at all, but that just gives you a little extra, extra guarantee that that B is gonna stay where you want it to go. Okay, again, I'm gonna place that down and then I am reaching under there and really pushing that adhesive down into the front of that card. Okay, now all we have left to do is embellish. Now this um, suite of products comes with these really cute embellishments. They're called adhesive back hearts and flowers for good reason because it's hearts and flowers. <laughs> so let's look here for my sample. I did two of these petal pink flowers. So let's pull those up again. I think I did a small one here and a larger one here. So let's put our small one up here and then the larger one we can put right down there again. Okay, so we have that done. And then on the inside, I did one of the little um, petal pink hearts right inside of that stamped heart that we did. So let's do that real quickly again. And I did pick a large one. I like these embellishments because they have a very flat profile they're not very bulky, so you can use them on the inside of a card and it's not going to affect how the card closes or anything like that. 
Alrighty. So there we go. Oh my gosh, this is just so stinking cute. So I'm thinking I actually like, I think I like the, um, the cardstock wings versus the vellum wings on this one because it just stands out a little bit more. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> hey, Pam. Thanks for joining today. So that is how you do this fun fold with a piece of designer series paper. Um, once again, this is one of the cards that you will get um, instructions for and the pieces to make for my January um, uh, yeah creative escape in a box I'm like hard kit now creative escape in a box so I am putting these together over the weekend and they should be sent out shortly once I get the order in for um, the stamp sets and the punches that people have ordered so that is our card today if you have any questions, you can pop them into the comments real quickly. Hey, Beth, how are you? Um, and I can get to answer those now. If not, um, always just leave your comments or questions in the comments below the video, and I will get back to you as soon as I see them. So once again, go Ravens. Hopefully, hopefully we will win today. I'm feeling very good about it. I am wearing all of my purple and um, my raven socks and the whole bit. So hopefully I will be staying nice and warm inside <laughs> watching the game, not going to the game in person. It's a little chilly. So if you are going to the game in person, you are my hero. There you go. So thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this is the Be My Valentine bundle in the January through April mini catalog along with the um, Be Mine designer series paper and the adhesive back hearts and flowers. So thanks so much for joining me today. If I can help you place an order, please just reach out to me. I would love to be helpful. Thanks so much. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.